Hi guys, how have you been? Today I just wanted to sit down and just do a quick chit chat and just share with you what's been on my mind lately. It's been something that I've been struggling trying to articulate it, so I thought, ah, just heck it, just record the video, we'll see how it goes. There are a lot of videos that I've recorded and I'm not edited at all, but I think sometimes I'm just trying to over edit myself and you know what, I'm just gonna just do it. So let me start off by sharing with you a story that just happened yesterday. Long story short, I actually have this electric bass guitar that I really really like. But I haven't played bass in like many many years, so it's been sitting in my storeroom for like five-ish years, just sitting there doing nothing. I don't practice on it at all because you know I mean like you can't really practice bass guitar by yourself. It's kind of boring. I was into the whole spring cleaning as a hobby kind of thing. So when I'm off work, I will go and like try to pack the house and get rid of my stuff on carousel, you know, into the whole minimalistic thing. And I like to declutter and like accumulate too much stuff. So I took pictures of it and I listed it on carousel together with my amp and I was like, I'm not sure how much I should put. This bass was a birthday gift to me from a group of friends and my then boyfriend Ken, which is who is now my husband, it was a birthday present and they got it secondhand from this other guy. So based off that price that they told me that they got it for together with the amp, I kind of put a price up there on carousel, $150, okay? So after putting it up, I had a bit of a... What do they call it? Seller's remorse because this base was so sentimental to me and it was such a nice looking base and I was like I don't really feel like seeing it go off to another person so people were like messaging me like mad okay like I don't know hello I'm interested hi I go to your house now hi hi I collect tonight hi 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 hello hello are you there hello hi 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 I'm like okay firstly I'm getting too many DMs on top of that of course some of them like actually tried to lowball me which is like maybe typical for carousel but there were people who offering me the price that I put up but I was a bit like hesitant to let it go so soon and so quickly so I decided to ask my friend who is uh, I don't know what you call it like a guitar expert on all things guitar related so I decided to like ask him like hey you know I put this I put up my electric bass guitar up for $150 together with the PV amp amplifier do you think this is a fair price okay I already put it up the listing and he was like, yeah, you know, sounds, sounds a bit cheap. Um, maybe the price is a bit too low. And he was like, let me go and do some research. So he asked me a few questions about the serial number, asking me to find out where it was me, and yada, yada, yada. Many, many things later, he suddenly said, I think I found your base uh, online. I found, I found out the brand of your, the model of your base. And he sent us um, like a link and the brand name of this electric bass guitar that was sold on eBay. And then I was like... You're kidding me. I'm like, is that my bass guitar? Because the listing on eBay was freaking $1,000 plus plus to $2,000 for my bass guitar. Apparently, this bass guitar was here sitting in my storeroom was a bass guitar that had appreciated in price. That had become, what do they call it? had become a collector's item because it was a one-off design and they stopped production for this design. And it was a limited number of pieces for this guitar electric guitar and this was sitting in my storeroom and I had listed this thing for $150 actually less because plus the PVM I actually super underestimated the value of this electric bass guitar. So the reason why I'm sharing with you this story is because recently there has been a lot of talk about addressing the whole PSLE streaming thing and the reason behind this spark of interest is actually because a lot of students um, feel a lot of pressure and I don't think it's just students, I think a lot of adults too feel the pressure, especially the young adults, feel the pressure to succeed in life and when they don't, there's this heavy weight of failure on them and actually according to the statistics um, of what I've heard is that there are a lot of suicide rates even though the newspapers don't report it and that's the reason why we're having this discussion about grades and not letting it affect you so much and all those kind of things. Okay, I don't want to get into the details of like all the I mean, there are people who are saying, you know, it's a privilege not to care about your grades. My point of view is that try your best, do your best. If your grades are not what people want you to get or what you hope to get, do not feel hopeless because that is only one way of measuring success. And relating this back to the story of the bass, now, I am not a bass expert. I am not an electric guitar expert, guitar expert of any other kind. I pick up the instrument for very practical reasons because people needed a bassist. But I don't know the value of this bass and I actually undervalued this bass by freaking... Is it 10 times? Gosh, my meds. Yeah, I undervalued this bass like 
10 times, 10 to 15 times under its value. But what its value was, was actually so much more and it was so unique and it was a one of a kind collector's item. Sometimes the education system only measures and grades things according to what that system values. Uh, you might be an electric based one of kind guitar in a place where they make pencils or pens, you know, so you cannot measure your value according to how they measure the pencil or a pen. But I would also like to say that sometimes you may struggle in life, you may think that you're not successful in anything, and oftentimes a lot of people just graduate from the grades to how much income you're getting as to a measure of success. And I think as humans, we find it very, very hard to be satisfied with intangibles because people cannot see your in intangible success Things like being having a fulfilled life, having good relationships, you know, finding um, joy and peace and all those kind of things are intangible and people cannot see it or measure it up. So it's very easy to use income as a way to measure people, whether they are worth it or successful or not. And to me, I think that just let's just scrape that because every human being has a value. And you know, if you if you've watched Prince of Egypt, the, the cartoon version, not the old version, the cartoon version, there's a song that says, look at your life through heaven's eyes. And sometimes I think that when we try to find our value in different things, like we try to find our value in having a spouse, we try to find our value in having a career, we try to find our value in having good academics, getting awards, being recognized in the news, being recognized in the media, being respected by people um, in your community. Sometimes we don't measure up or we don't feel as valued when we try to find our belonging or our worth or our value in these different areas. And, and the only way you can find your true value is to talk to the person who created us in the first place. So of course, as a Christian, I believe that God created us with a purpose intentionally and in Ephesians 2 verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand. So every one of us has um, is created with a purpose, is created with intention, and is created with love. And it doesn't matter like what kind of position you have or what kind of influence you have, everyone is still as valued. In Luke 12, 6 and 7, it says, Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, you are more valuable than many sparrows. Sometimes we do fear and we worry about the future and I think that's why we put a lot of pressure on on education and the grades and like what school you go to and like whether you make it here or there or like what kind of company you, you work in and etc etc and, and whether you, you can uh, advance in your career or not. And I think that those are valid fears. I... um. You know, we are trying to control an uncontrollable future. We never know what will happen. You know, people can say like, oh, you know, go into engineering or, or you know, you better do well in your grades. You know, you're going to be a complete failure. But you just never know. And I think that a lot of people talk about the privilege of wealth. And I can see that the more affluent, well-to-do students have a lot of resources on their hands. They have tuition. They drive a car, they have a mate to help them, and they don't have to work a second job, they have enough, you know, they can just concentrate on their studies. There's another kind of privilege that I want to share with you today, and this privilege is accessible to everyone. You know, the privilege of wealth, no matter how, you know, you can't make yourself be born into a rich family, you can't really uh, control any of that. But I wanted to share with you the privilege of hope, and of a future, and the privilege of peace that I experienced because I decided to just surrender my life to God and to allow Him to take care of me and to allow Him to uh, to trust that He has a plan for me. So one of my favorite verses that really kept me through this whole thing was for I, it was Jeremiah twenty nine verse eleven. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace, not evil, not bad stuff, but plans to give you a hope and a future. Never to forget that. Joshua one nine also another favorite verse of my probably because I'm often scared and anxious. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. No mistake or no failure is ever too bad or too much of a failure for God to work into something good. And this promise that God gives to us is that, don't worry, no matter what happens, I have a plan for you. You can think by, do, by making this mistake or by doing this thing and failing in that, that you're doomed. There's no more hope. But 
God can turn these mistakes and these failures and this problem into something good. And I also believe that in God's eyes, you know, to him, a life that is good, a life that is prosperous, is one filled with peace and with joy, the intangible things. It's not so much about being recognized, being respected and influenced and earning a five-figure income. That is not how God sees your value. No matter what you do, no matter how many mistakes you make, how many times you fail, he still thinks you are worthy. He still thinks that you are worth it and of value. And there is always hope for the future. You know when they say that there are many paths to success, now I use the word success in inverted commas because there are a lot of definitions for success. But in my case, when I talk about success, I think that it's about um, joy, fulfillment, peace. That is what a successful life is to me. Of course, we all need to eat. We all need to have a place to stay. Those are the basic needs. And so, like, um, there's a verse that says, with God, nothing is impossible. Sometimes our own human mind cannot see beyond certain events. We cannot think about how things can happen. But God is a creative God. He's a resourceful God. And he can work things out for good in a way that we cannot imagine. We cannot, no matter what, we cannot control the future. Whatever it is, God knows you. He designed you. He knows your strengths, your weaknesses. And he has a future that I honestly believe is good. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away and all things become new. So this privilege of hope, of, of future, of peace is available to everyone and anyone can have access to it. John 1 verse 9 says to all who receive him and to all who believe in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. And when you are under God's care, you are privileged. It's like, it's the one thing that you can control, so-called. You can't be born into a wealthy family, but you can be born into the kingdom of God. Or you can be born into God's rule, and he will take care of you like a good father. And I think God would definitely like a chance to prove that he, that he can be a good father and a good God in your life. And if you would like to take that chance with him, all you have to do is just say, God, I want to put my trust in you. I place my life in your hands. Help me, Lord. And I think that... You know, he hears everyone, even in the deepest depths of your heart. You don't even need to say it. He can hear it. And I think that's one of the amazing things about, about knowing God and, and, and having a relationship with Jesus is that he really knows you so well. Like, yeah, so I don't know. I hope I, I make sense because really I just cannot write all my thoughts down. But if you're out there and you feel disrespected, undervalued, people look down on you because maybe you don't have good grades or you don't, you know, you're not featured in the newspaper, you don't have a lot of followers on Instagram or you don't earn enough or you don't have that BMW to say, ha, I made it. Don't look to the wrong measures. Remember the bass guitar. Look to the one who created you and you will know your true value. And I hope that you get to experience Hope. I hope that you get experience hope. I, yeah, but I do. Like, I hope you get experience the hope and the peace and, and to see your worth. And to see your true worth. You, my friend, are a vintage, one-of-a-kind, out-of-production, highly-priced electric bass guitar. Cheers. Well, anything, you can always email me at info at nicoldan.com if you have anything to share with me or to clarify anything that I'm saying because I know sometimes I don't really talk very clearly. I'm trying to work on it. Maybe I should record more videos and practice a bit more because sometimes I'm just uh, not clear in my thoughts. And then trying to write it down. It's like, oh, okay, I'm going to stop rambling now. Until the next video, see you. Bye! Bring your song.